Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. And today it's time to check this thing out. I finally upgraded the Panasonic Tough Book I had. And I had a CF29, which came with a Pentium 3 1.4 gigahertz processor. And I did a massive amount of upgrades to that thing over the years. Gave it a uh, PATA, P-A-T-A, SSD drive, which is kind of a rarity at its time. And did an unofficial upgrade to 2 gigabytes of RAM. That helped me use that thing all the way up until this year 2020 so not bad now it was running my bbs which was uh, synchronet and also ran a shoutcast server and it also ran um you know well pretty much like uh, winamp which is my radio station software that i use to run my little low part or part 15 am radio station Anyway, it, it finally really was starting to show its age. You know, Windows 7 is no longer supported. I had installed Windows 7 on it, which was kind of clunky even to begin with. But as the years went on, Windows 7, with all its updates, really kind of was slow. Enough about the history part. I ended up picking this up. This actually came from Canada. It's a CF30, which is a Core 2 Duo. So it has a dual core processor in it. Not a whole lot faster megahertz wise, but a whole lot faster speed wise. Also, uh, I went ahead and upgraded this to uh, max RAM it can take, which is four gigs. So we got to double that. And I also replaced this with an SSD drive, but this is a SATA, S-A-T-A drive. And that is a whole lot faster as well. So what we ended up with is, even though it's still old uh, technology by today's standards, for what I needed to do, it might as well be blazing fast. It's lightning speed. So let me go ahead. I'm going to unplug it here for a second. And I'll just show you the case. This is the blacked out model. At first, I thought somebody might have painted it. But it appears that came from the factory that way. On this side, what do we got here? We have a uh, express card slot, another express card slot. We also have a DVD drive here, which is nice because the... Um, the old CF29 just had a floppy drive, and that one was broken. I mean, it was no good uh, from the time I bought it. Uh, so everything had to be done through, via USB. Still, obviously, USB is you know the main way I'm going to be transferring data, but the fact that it does have a DVD drive is nice. If I want to watch a movie on there or something like that, that's pretty cool. Now, I won't unscrew this one. Well, I'll, no, I won't really open that up. I won't open that up. But that's where the battery lives in there. This one does hold an excellent charge, about two and a half hours. One of the cool things about Tough Books is, man, those, those batteries lasted forever. So that was really nice. On the back, we have all our ports. They're covered over, so I'll pull them down. There's our uh, serial port, which is really cool. If you ever watched my video on the BBS, you'll know that it has the ability to work um, plain old-fashioned dial-up. And you can still use DOS BBSs in the modern era. This uh, unit, and the reason I went with Toughbooks, has a serial port, which is still nice, but it also even still has a built-in modem, which was kind of a rarity when these things came out. But it has it, and, uh, and it's really nice to have that kind of functionality. Now I'll go ahead and open this up. And on the back side here, you can see we have two USB 2.0 ports, a proprietary uh, expansion port here, VGA out, and microphones and audio out here, so that's really cool. Well, usually uh, these are hooked to my mixer board for the radio station, and so that's what's going on back there. And then on this side, um, this is unfortunate. This thing was in perfect shape, but I did just break the tab off here, so that's where the power goes. And you can, you know, it helps keep it waterproof. Um, although I won't be putting it out in rough situations, but there's our power supply there. Here is another USB 2.0 port. And then on here, we have even more stuff going on. Let me open this up. There we go. And I like this. So we have a uh, Ethernet wire card, you know, so like I can plug actual wire Ethernet in. And there, right there, 56K modem. So old school cool, but it works. And for communication issues, that would be kind of nice to have in the event of a grid down or partial. Uh, well, I can't say the word, but uh, let's say uh, controls on uh, speech on the Internet were to uh, be ramped up. There'd be another way of communicating online. And right here, a FireWire card. Now, you don't see those very often. They kind of fade it off into the background, but it's another way of uh, transferring information. A lot of cameras in the early digital age used FireWire for transferring, so that's kind of neat. And then this one also, my old CF29 did have this one. An SD card reader, which is great. So, you know, I have trail cams and uh, security cameras on the property, and a lot of those operate off of SD cards. Here's a nice way to grab those SD cards, slide them in, and I can check that stuff right on the spot. And in here, I won't open this up. 
this is the uh, hard drive enclosure. So it's a heated hard drive enclosure. Of course, with the SSD, it's not as critical to have it in a certain operating temperature, but it's insulated, it's shockproof, and it's there. On the front here, this is also a nice little upgrade from the original uh, or the CF29 that I had. I can turn the wireless on and off, which the other one, it, it was software control, so that has that nice switch. And then um, the, I'll go ahead and open it up. And let me back the camera out ever so slightly. There we go. And I'll plug it in and we'll fire it up. Looks like it's already trying to start on me here. Sure is. So I have uh, I have installed Windows 7 32-bit uh, on this. This is a 32-bit system. But this is an incredibly clean condition. It's a Centrino Dual and it does have the 4 gig. Now this does not have the lit keyboard, um, but you can get a lit keyboard for this, uh, that waterproof kind of backlit keyboard for about 20 bucks. So it's on the list of things that I'll probably upgrade at some point here. I'll go ahead and log in and we'll get her going. But uh, oh, there's a uh, Synchronet. It's already running in the background here. And I've had some issues with Synchronet uh, just merging this over to this new computer. But the BBS, for those of you who'd like to follow that stuff, should be back online here shortly. I'll go ahead and minimize that. and. It's just a clean setup, you know, it's a square aspect ratio. I'm going to back this up a little bit just so we can see this whole thing because I want y'all to... There we go. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, it's a it's the old 4x3 uh, style. It's not a widescreen, which is fine with me because a lot of the programs I use on this are, let's say, elderly programs. But it works really good. Speed-wise, it's interesting. I, I'm actually going to do a comparison test side-by-side -side before I part ways with the CF-29. But seeing as the CF-29 has an SSD card in it as well, boot times seemed very similar. And so it's a little bit deceiving at first, but when you actually get into program, like, it's okay. Synchronet's a pretty small program, 14 or 15 megabytes. And Winamp is only 5 or 6 megabytes. And, and, and uh, the server program for uh, uh, Shoutcast is a fairly small program. So all those once they're up and running don't really take a lot of overhead from the computer but if you wanted to go out online if you wanted to go on google or you wanted to go to internet explorer or you wanted to do anything else other than those things that's when the cf29 would really slow down so if i was looking to get new software or if i needed to communicate or download programs onto this using chrome and even if none of the other programs were working or are were operational at the time when you went into the CF-29 and tried to do that kind of stuff, that's when it really showed its age. And so having the CF-30 with the dual core processor has really helped with that. You can see, I don't know, I'll, I'll open up Internet Explorer just as an example here. It boots fairly quickly and uh, searches, you know, you see it loads the pictures fairly quickly. So it's, it's not bad. I, I'm really, that would have taken about four times longer, maybe five times longer to do on the CF-29. And, uh, and so that's why that's why I really feel like this was a worthy upgrade. I paid a little less than $100 for this, but then I did buy the um, the SSD card and an extra 2 gig stick of RAM. So I'm right in it for a little bit, just shy, I think, with shipping and everything else. I think it was like $98, $99, something like that for all the components to finish this thing up. Good news is, uh, you know, I plan on selling the CF-29 because it's still functional. And hopefully uh, I'll recoup some of that money, but... If you have any questions about the Toughbook line of uh, computers and why somebody would want to spend $100 for a computer that's so dated at this point, I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. These things can be dropped. They can be left out in the cold. They're extremely durable. Um, you don't find broken ones very often. And I don't mean just like physically broken, but I mean like inside, you don't find solder joint cracks. You don't find issues where the things just start, you know, crashing randomly. And because I run a radio station, and I run the BBS off of this. Those are programs that need to be running all the time, 24 hours, seven days a week, months at a time. And quite literally, the CF-29, there was like an eight or nine month period of time where I didn't even open the thing up. It sat there up near the roof line, near the antenna and transmitter for the AM's transmitter. And it just did its thing. And when I took it down to, uh, to upgrade it, because it was still running Windows XP, uh, it was it had been online for like, you know, like I said months months on end without ever being bothered and it was still doing its thing So very cool. Anyway, I am Eric the owner of Farpoint Farms. Hope you enjoyed this video If you did perhaps you will think about liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Take care There's always something that needs a little fixing on Farpoint Farms Freedom is my